I'm Lucy. I'm one of the engineers on the core team. I graduated from Columbia in 2021, and I joined WARP in early March. I'm really excited to show you some of the features that we've been working on this quarter. The first thing you might notice is that the input is at the top. And the way this works is the commands that you run will appear below the prompt. I personally really like this because it prevents me from having to look down all the time when I want to run something in my terminal. One of the big features that I'm really excited to show you today is subshells. The way I'm going to demo this is I'm going to create a Docker container and run it. And then I'm going to try to run a shell inside my Docker container. The way this would typically work is I would run this command and then I would get a shell a little bit like this. So you'll notice that everything is kind of scrunched into one block and we've kind of normally this would be like a regression to a normal terminal. But now I can warpify the subshell, so I'm going to press Control I. And now we're still running the sub the subshell, um, but warp now understands how the subshell works and gives you all the features that you would expect at the top level. So for example, you'll notice I have my completions menu, I have syntax highlighting, um, everything is in a block, etc. Um, and then when I exit the container, all of the commands in my history are annotated with this little banner showing that they were executed in the context of Docker and not at the, high, the top level. The next feature that I'm going to show you is fish abbreviations. Um, and to do that, I'm actually going to use a subshell again and warpify fish. Um, so fish abbreviations, if I have something like gc for git commit or gs for git status, those now expand just as you would expect. Um, the next feature that I'm going to show you is how we process background output. So in order to provide a little bit of context for, how, for why this is an important feature, I'm first going to show you how this looks in a regular terminal. Notably, I'm going to show you how this works in the native Mac terminal. Um, let's see, we're going to try to run the warp app, and then I'm going to use an ampersand to send it to the background. So as this is building, um, you'll notice, just I have the cargo clean, but um, as this builds, you'll notice that there's a ton of output. And then if I try to type, it's kind of, it still is typing, but it's kind of unclear what's, um, what's going on. It blends, it messes with the input a lot. So instead, I'm going to quit this process um, and show you what this looks like on warp. So the way this looks is we run this in the background and the output is all still there, but it gets put into a separate block now. It doesn't interfere with the input editor at all. So I can still write whatever I'd like and execute those commands um, and they will just appear in a separate block. Um, while we wait for that to finish, let's look at synchronized inputs, which is another feature that we built this quarter. Let's say you want to run a couple of integration tests in parallel, um, and the way I would do that is by writing something like cargo test. But I don't want to write cargo test over and over again, so I'm going to turn on synchronized inputs using command option I. And you'll notice actually at the top we have this new thing, um, tab status indicators, showing me that synchronized inputs is on. Now when I type cargo test, that input appears in all of the editors, all of the panes in this tab. Um, and now I can turn it off and I can say maybe I want to do launch config here. Give me a moment to open um, the new warp instance we were running. So the launch config here, maybe I want to do, I want to test like login, maybe I want to test referrals, something like that. So that's how synchronized inputs works. So we've opened our new copy of warp. Um, great. Um, while I'm here, let me check my referral status. Looks like I've referred 17 people, not quite at the baseball hat level yet, but here you can see our new referrals UI. Um, and the last thing I want to show you is when commands fail, um, we also have a, um, I guess, a tab status indicator for that. So here you'll notice we have the little error indicator. 
Um, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.